nice and straight out. Remove the oil filter, come straight down. It's really coming out. Remember, nothing tight on here, you are tightening plastic. Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. So we're gonna take a break from the cars and do a full annual service on a Yamaha outboard here. Uh, this is a F-150 XA. 2014 but this should be the same for any 2007 and up Yamaha outboard so we're going to be doing the oil the internal anodes the water pump and the gear oil in this video so uh, check in the description I have all the part numbers there I also have the video sectioned up chapters so you can just fast forward if you just want to see the water pump or just the anodes you can easily go to it anyway real quick what I am I basically work on cars and do things that people say normal people can't DIY and I show you how to DIY them so feel free to subscribe Definitely hit the like button if this helps you. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. All right, here on the famous pool table, we've got all the parts we need. So you can buy these as a kit or you can buy them individual. Uh, filter and Yamaha oil. You're gonna need 1.36 quarts of gear oil and new gaskets for the screws. Uh, over here, we got all the anodes. So there's three big internal anodes and there's one small one. And then these are the grommets for them. And that's the washer for that one. Over here we have our water pump kit. Uh, you can just buy the, depending on the age of it, you can buy just the actual impeller or you can buy the whole kit. I didn't know when mine was last done, so I decided to do the whole thing. And then last we have the Sea Hunt filter and then a internal uh, fuel filter for the Yamaha. All right, so you just, you can easily just pop the caliper right off. Set this somewhere where it's not going to get scratched. So we'll start with the oil chains. On the port side of the motor, you'll find your oil filter. Uh, if your motor's been run recently, it's probably going to leak oil out everywhere. If it hasn't been run in a while, then uh, there's a good chance that it's pretty much dry already. Uh, but you're still going to want to just tuck all these rags in here just so oil doesn't spread anywhere in case there's oil in there. Remove the oil filter. See this one was dry. Use a clean rag. Make sure there's no dirt. Wipe away. Now we're going to take our new oil filter. Again, just, just like any oil change, put a little smear coat of oil. Use a rag. Snug it up hand tight. Then remove our rags. Now down here on the lower part of your motor inside this rubber thing is the 14 millimeter you need to drain the oil from. The issue is you don't want to drain oil all over the back of your car or your motor. I'm so used to working on cars. So you need to come up with an improvised device. So I have a tube here with some tape on there so it doesn't scratch up. And basically you just slide this into place and let it drain out. Either way, still have your rags ready. Still spilled a little bit, but at least it was not very much. So now while our oil is draining, I like to come over here and do our fuel filter, which is this thing right here. So on the bottom of this is a sensor. If you follow the sensor over, there's a plug. We need to unplug this. Just depress the uh, blue button and it comes off pretty easily. That allows you to slip your wrench through here. Remember righty tighty, lefty loosey. That means we need to screw it down. Okay. Once again, we're gonna just stuff a bunch of rags down here. This will make sure if anything spills, we're not just spilling it all over the apron and foot and cavity in here. So out comes the old filter. Now obviously, if it does look like it's dirty, like you got some bad gas, you're probably gonna to wanna to just dump the whole fuel bowl. I'm really not worried about it at all. Uh, everything in here looks super clean. New filter goes straight in, so there's no debris. Now the gasket is going to be on here, a little tricky. There's the old gasket. Obviously use much care so you don't knock that gasket off. Remember nothing tight on here, you are tightening plastic so I call this plastic stud. Pull our rags out, root this back down here. Now mine's a sea hunt, yours might be in a different location, but it's a good time to also do the water separator. I used a little bit of engine oil for its loop. It says just a half turn after the gasket touches. There we go. Now we can reinstall our drain plug with its crush washer using our 14 millimeter. 
nothing crazy, just nice and snug. Go ahead and clean up our residue oil. All right, now back up top, we just add in five quarts of Yamaha oil. I always check it after about four and a half. Clean funnel. Now the capacity is written in several different places. Some say 4.8. Either way, you don't want to be totally full, so you can see that I'm about two-thirds the way up the stick, which is exactly where I like it. Uh, again, that kind of comes down to personal preference. Okay, so oil change is done. We're going to move on to the engine internal anodes. Uh, we're going to do four of them. To get to them, we just need to pull up some of these protective plastic pieces. They just kind of snap off. So we're going to be doing four of them. There's one here. There are two right here. And then the fourth one we're going to be doing is this guy right there. So anyway, pretty easy. Let's show you how to do it. So we're just going to use a 12 millimeter. Loosen it here. Remove the bolt. You're going to want to not bump these around. I'll show you why here in a second. Pull it straight out and we can check it out. Now this motor has about 275 hours on there and they've been done once before. So as you can see, this one is not too bad. I like to do them preemptively just because if you wait too long, they'll get so caked up that stuff will fall off and you'll have chunks of salt and rusted, you know, zinc or whatever this is that are falling off in your motor. So do them preemptively and they won't cause any problems. Now we'll go ahead and move on to the back ones. It might be easier just to go ahead and pull your spark plug leads off just to give yourself some more room. Again, a 12 with a little extension. Now, if you're having trouble, you can just kind of use some long needle nose pliers and pull that out. Otherwise, like I said, do them preemptively and they come out really easily, nice and straight out. This one's a little bit worse, but see, you don't want to, that stuff as it builds, the last thing you want to do is just to fall inside the motor. And here we go, last one in here. So this one, just for access, I'm going to use needle nose pliers, actually more of a duckbill plier. Just grab it, and we'll go straight out. Now the last one is up here on top, right before the, you know, this engine hook, right there. 14 millimeter. And this one I do not believe has been done. It's actually this part right here on this. And you can see that I'm going to have to vacuum out that hole because a lot of the, uh, salty corrosion went in there now to clean out that hole we're literally going to use a vacuum and i got some random hoses to kind of stick in there we're just going to suck it all out that actually perfect is perfectly clean in there all right so now in the dirty toolbox we have our four anodes so we're just going to use a vice grip 10 millimeter so i'm actually going to switch to just a electric impact i think that'll make it a lot easier to do this Okay, one off and gripping it on the big part, 10 millimeter. I'm replacing the grommets with it and the anodes. Basically, it's just a good idea to clean up any of the debris that might still be in here. The grommets kind of have a center friction ring, but they're uh, symmetrical either way. So just slide the new ones on there. Screw them down. We'll use kind of a towel on the square part of it this time, tighten it down. So now we've got the three large ones done. Let's move on to the small one. So on this smaller one, there's actually a little Phillips head there. So I'm going to put it on a 14 millimeter wrench. It came out really easy. Now out comes the little anode and we definitely want to clean that up real good. We got a new gasket so we can take this old gasket off and we'll use just a now that we got that nice and clean, we can go ahead and install the new anode on this one. Anode goes cone side up. Take our screw. Just snug. Now we're going to install the gasket. It's ready to go back in there. Now we can go ahead and reinstall the top smaller anode. Goes in a lot easier without all that corrosion. Now we're ready to reinstall the anodes. I'm just going to use a little bit of a smear of clean engine oil to help it slide in there. We'll actually use the pliers to guide this one. Definitely make sure you get it flush on its own and don't use the bolt to draw it flush. So I pushed hard, it kind of snapped in there. Again, just a little smear of oil to help it go in and get it to press in on its own so you don't have to use the bolt to suck it down. There it goes. And then no need to crank these down. Just nice and snug is all. 
If you pulled off a lead like I did, make sure you get it to click all the way back in. And then anode three, just like the other two. And gently snug it up. All right, so now we've addressed all four of the anodes, the internal anodes on our engine, and we can move on to the foot. All right, so with the oil and the anodes done, it's time to move on to part three. We're going to do the water pump on this and finish off lastly with the gear oil. So the first thing you're going to want to do, if your trim anode is, uh, you know, adjusted at all, go ahead and mark where it is because we're going to be taking this off and you want to put it back exactly where it was. So mine is actually slightly tilted towards the first notch. Next, we're going to go ahead and remove this rubber cap. Pop straight out. So now 12 millimeter on some long extensions. Okay, bottom anode is off. We'll use a magnet to pull that bolt the rest of the way up. Hopefully there's some steel on me. There we go. So now with the trim anode off, we need to remove the rest of the bolts. There's seven of them. So three on each side and then one on the bottom. And for all of those, it's just going to be a 14 millimeter. And honestly, the best tool for this is just a 14 millimeter gear wrench. Uh, what I have over here is a stand. This is just two tires, two two by fours and a tail, and this will hold the assembly when we put it on here. So sometimes you undo the last bolt and the thing will fall out. Other times you do got to tap it with a mallet. Uh, one thing you need to avoid doing is you can't twist it at all. There's some plastic parts in there that will break. Ask me how I know. Uh, if you if you twist, so it needs to just come straight down. What I actually like to do is remove all the bolts, but leave two in there with just the first couple threads in there. That allows it to come straight down without twisting, if that makes sense. Like I said, just loosen. Put it back in. Just turn it like three or four threads. So what we're going to do is just give it a couple good smacks. Gently. There it goes. See, and those bolts are actually going to catch it, and they kept it straight. Now that it's loose, support it, and just undo those last two bolts you had that are just finger tight. Again, no twisting motion. You can rock it back and forth, but no twisting. Come straight down. Okay, so here is our drive shaft and water pump. The water pump kit comes with everything. Obviously, we just need the impeller, but we're going to go ahead and change everything uh, just because it's a good idea. The whole process starts with removing the case with just some 12 millimeters. These shouldn't be very tight, but hopefully they're not corroded. Again, anytime you do anything with this, you're working on plastic, unless you want to buy new housing, be very gentle, especially when you go to tighten everything back up. And then it's just very important to kind of set everything down exactly in the way that you took it off, and that way it can go back on there easily. Take some pictures if you're really worried about it. Now we just slide the whole pump housing out. You can see there is an O-ring on the inside, and here's the O-ring that goes on the outside. It's important to note kind of where these two marks are because these two marks correlate with uh, the pump sitting flush. So they're basically exactly at the uh, 130 and uh, I guess the 430 position if this is 12. So the next thing we got to do, we can just pull this off if we want, but I want to move this metal ring. This thing's actually pretty sturdy. You can actually pry up against it just very gently. All right, so metal ring off, then the uh, plastic piece, gently slide it up and off. Now we got two washers. The metal, and then our impeller. Uh, you need to note which way the impeller spins. So obviously you can tell that this thing spins clockwise, which means the blades are all kind of pointing backwards so now if you're just doing the impeller only you can stop right here if you're doing the whole kit like I'm doing uh, you can just continue on now we can just lift the whole plate up you can see there's a gasket on the bottom so now the kit comes with two dowels I'm gonna make the executive decision that we do not need the two dowels we will go ahead and do the new gasket and the bottom plate 
clean up the area. It's actually in pretty good shape right now. There is a top and bottom. As you can see, the bottom has kind of notches where, uh, and the top does not. So we're gonna start this way down with the gasket. Line it up on the dowels. Now on the impeller, this part has no keyhole. That one has the keyhole right here. So we're gonna make sure we install it this way down. Pretty grippy. <laughs> Keyhole's lined up with this blade, so we'll spin it around, push it down, okay? So I did put a tiny skim coat of Vaseline on here just for like the first start. Never seen anywhere that says you need to do that, but for me, it makes me feel a lot better. So remember, this is gonna spin clockwise. So we're gonna go ahead and kind of bend all these back to make them fit into the housing. Again, rotating it clockwise. Honestly, this is what the Vaseline is for, just to like let me be able to spin it while we're doing this. Next, we go on our two washers. Spring one first, then the piece of plastic, and then the notorious ring. So now what I've done is just take adjustable wrench, put it pretty snug onto the pipe. That gives you quite a bit of a surface area. Gently tap it into place. Make sure it's nice and even all the way around and that should be good. We're almost done guys. In the housing, we're gonna go ahead and remove the old O-ring on the top. I'm gonna have to get a pick. No, there we go. We're gonna go ahead and just put a little bit of Vaseline on the O-ring and that'll kind of hold it in place. Same thing with the larger one, just a little bit of Vaseline and that is good enough to hold it into its slot. We're gonna make sure you want this seated really well. All right, so once again, we're gonna position this at about the uh, 230 and 430 position. Lower the housing right back on there. As it goes down, just make sure that O-ring didn't fall off. And if you've done it right, it will be completely flush. If there's a lip at all, you, you need to rotate the metal. But as you can see, this one is completely flush all the way around, which means we can reinstall our bolts. So the kit comes with four brand new bolts. Make sure you line the tabs up correctly. Once again, be mindful that you are tightening onto plastic, so just this is going to be plastic snug, not even metal snug. All right, pretty happy with that. All right, now water pump is replaced. We can go ahead and install this back on there. Again, be very careful not to break that. All right, so now we just carefully slide this up in there. You're going to have to like visually double check that you're in the right hole. There, once you got it kind of in there, Start a bolt. Oh. All right, so we now we've got all of our bolts cleaned up and anti-seize installed. Now we can just go ahead and reinstall them all, snug this all down, and we are done. Now we'll just set the trim back to where it was and go ahead and snug down the anode. All right, so we are almost done. We've done oil anodes. We've worked our way down to the water pump. Now we are all the way down to the gear oil. So we got a fill hole here and we have a drain hole here. Uh, and when I say fill hole, we don't fill here. <laughs> you actually fill and drain from here. I don't know why, uh, but I'm guessing Yamaha knows. So you do have to buy one of these kits that has a fitting, and that way you can pump the fluid into there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get a drain pen ready, and then we're gonna find one of the biggest flatheads we can find. This isn't that big, but there we go. Back it out. Fluid starts flowing. As you can see, it's not coming out very fast. Let's go ahead and undo the top. And now it's really coming out. All right, so we're gonna go and let that drain for a few minutes. I find it definitely drains with the, uh, the motor slightly tilted up. When we go to fill it though, we will go ahead and set it level. I'm also replacing both of the washers on the uh, plugs with new washers from Yamaha. So now we have drained out approximately a little over quart. Fluid actually looked really good. Uh, it's time to fill. So like I said, we need to fill in that hole. So this pump comes with a little connector. We're simply just going to screw it into the hole. I don't need too much. We're going to be filling this with the Yamaha gear lube. Go ahead and pump it in there. Time for a time lapse, I think. All right, so one down. Now we got to do the .36. Actually, I think it's 0 .036. There we go. So now that we're coming out of the top hole, we can go ahead and install our new gasket. One last little squirt. Oh, never mind. 
All right, and then we take the bottom one. And if you ever get confused, the bottom one has a magnet on there. The top one does not. Yeah, we'll go ahead and take the old gasket off of this one, the new one on. All right, so now the tricky part is we got to install this without losing a whole lot of fluid. Now, the idea is with the top one in place, it shouldn't come out very fast at all anyway. So we'll go ahead and unscrew this. Here we go. Nice and tight. Again, make that one snug. Go ahead and clean everything up. And now we've got brand new gear fluid in our Yamaha. Well, there you go, guys. A full annual service has been completed on my boat. It's ready to hit the water, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button. YouTube uses that just to like make sure the video doesn't get hidden. Anyway, guys, thanks again.